Hey everyone, welcome to George's Library. This is George, and today I want to talk about A Tale for the Time Beings by Ruth Ozeki. I am very excited to tell you about this novel because it's one that I enjoyed very much. This is the first novel by Ruth Ozeki that I ever read. This is uh, the first time I discovered Ruth Ozeki. And I must say, it got me hooked from the very first page. And she got me hooked to explore more of her books. So I was working at the library a few weeks ago. And it just so happened that I stumbled upon her book while shelving some of the returns we got. The title seemed interesting. The cover was alluring. The premise on the back seemed intriguing. So I opened the book and read the first page. I just couldn't get it out of my head. So later that day, I borrowed the book and read it for myself. Ruto Zeki is of Japanese descendants and also a Zen Buddhist. Therefore, a lot of elements in this novel are related to that. We have a lot of Japanese culture. We have a lot of Buddhist culture in this novel. All mixed together in a wonderful, wonderful way. It's, it's just beautiful. Many times I was reminded of the Ghibli animations. And if you're not familiar with Ghibli, then for Christ's sake, Google it and thank me. If you are familiar with Ghibli, then I'm sure you might have an interest in, in, a, in a Tale for Time Being just because of that. Because this one has a lot of those nice, subtle Japanese elements, uh, Japanese mythology behind it and Japanese folklore. Well, before I get ahead of myself... In, we, in this, the novel explores two main stories. One story is Root's story, a character based on the author and her husband. Although she claims that the character is based on herself, I am quite sure there is a lot of fiction involved and there are slight differences between her real self and the, the character portrayed in the novel. Ruth and her husband Oliver live on a remote island in British Columbia. And one day, while walking the beach, they stumble upon a Hello Kitty box that was brought by the waves with a diary inside. And this is how we get to the second main story, which is Nao's story. Nao is a Japanese teenage girl who is suicidal and wants to write about her 104-year-old grandmother, who also happens to be a Buddhist nun. This context allows us to explore so many things. There's so much to learn about the Japanese culture and the Buddhist teachings. We explore the effects of war from the point of view of a kamikaze soldier. We explore suicide and bullying in schools and cyberbullying. We explore families. We explore the idea of family and the patterns within families that go, to, through gener uh, that go from generation to generation. There's also a bit of magic realism and quantum physics. We also explore the relationship between the reader and the author, almost to a metaphysical level. In fact, this novel is described as being a metafictional novel. Listen, I could not recommend this book enough. It's one of the best discoveries I had of late. And I just can't wait to jump back into another one of her novels. Uh, if you want to know more about her, you can always YouTube Ruth Ozeki, and she has a lot of great interviews and a lot of discussions and conversations with other writers about her work, and she's a great voice to listen to and a great mind to dive into. I'm fascinated with, I'm fascinated with her work, I'm fascinated with this novel, and I'm really looking forward to try the new things that she has to do. If you're a fan of magic realism, if you're a fan of mystery novels, if you're a fan of novels that are fun but dealing with serious subjects, then this is definitely something that you should try. If you're looking for a Canadian author, uh, Ruth Ozeki is an amazing author to start with. Thanks for watching my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more reviews. I'm looking forward to hearing your opinion of the book in the comments. I'm looking forward to hear if you have anything to say about Ruto Zeki or if you recommend any other books that I should read that are similar. And um, or one thing that I'm really interested in is to learn about more good Canadian writers that I can explore. So thanks for watching.
Stay safe out there. Keep on reading and see you next time.